guys, it's Nikki here. I'm here today to do my top five most disappointing reads of the year. They're not necessarily going to be books that I hated. In some cases they are. Um, but they're just books that disappointed me in some way, either in that they didn't live up to the hype I had heard about them, or just if I just didn't enjoy them in general less than I expected. They're in no particular order, they're just the top five, the ones that come to mind the quickest when I think of this category. The first one is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. And before you guys jump down my throat, hear me out. It's not that it was a bad book and that I didn't like parts of it, but I am simply no longer the intended audience. Being that I'm almost 30, I actually had a very, very hard time connecting to the characters and the situations and the relationship dynamics because they are all teenagers. That's it. And it is kind of the epitome of why of the YA fantasy struggle I've had since the beginning of the year. My second most disappointing read was Red, White, and Royal Blue. Again, not a terrible book. It's a romance. I usually love romance. And in this book, I liked the relationship between the two main character, the main character and his love interest. I loved the familiar relationships the main character had with his, like, with his immediate family. And I loved all of their interaction. I just didn't like the rest of the book. The political parts of the book were just way too much in my opinion. And although, and it made the plot feel very scattered and that there was just focus being pulled in too many different directions. So it, was, like, it wasn't a terrible, terrible book and there were things I really enjoyed in it. In the end, I just did not love it the way so many people loved it. My third most disappointing read is called Duty and Desire um, by Pamela Aiden. I was going through my list of books and I don't know how I missed it. This should have made my top 10 <laughs> worst reads of the year. But January feels like forever ago and that's when I read this. So it missed that list, but it makes this one. It is the second book in a three-part series that is Pride and Prejudice rewritten from Darcy's point of view, which sounds amazing. The first book was gr pretty good. I remember enjoying it quite a bit. The second book, which is this one, just don't do it. It added nothing to the story, nothing to Darcy's point of view. It just, it felt like a waste of book to fill in a period of time where Darcy isn't around Elizabeth. It just, given how good the first one was, the second one just comparatively was not worth reading. And I was super disappointed in, in it. And I'm pretty sure I never picked up the third one because of it. <laughs> Now we'll go on to my fourth. Uh, this is also YA fantasy, like the first first book I mentioned was, and this is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maherin. And I dislike this book on so many levels. Again, I liked the characters. <laughs> I liked the characters in theory, but I didn't like anything else about this story. I picked up the physical book, and I had to finish it as an audiobook on a faster speed than I normally listen to because I had a very hard time going through it at all. I had so many problems with the romantic relationship. It was problematic. It was dumb. The premise of the story was dumb and the people involved and their decisions were dumb. And I just, while I understand why some people would really, really like this, I, and I probably myself would have liked it as a teenager, but reading it now, I just can't believe the scope and magnitude of decisions being made with no information. <laughs> and just the la complete and utter lack of communication from everybody across the board in all situations, not just the romantic one. And if I had to pick, it's probably the most disappointing book of the year because I was wondering where I was going to fall because I'd heard so many good things about it, but then I found a bunch of problematic ones as I was picking it up and I immediately saw why it was problematic. And this leads me into my fifth and final most disappointing read of 2020, and that is Space Opera by Catherine M. McManus. And when I picked it up, I did look at some reviews and I was like, oh cool, 
a lot of people are comparing it to like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy meets Eurovision. This could be really cool. And unfortunately, I just couldn't get into the writing style. I think the story was kind of interesting and would have been more interesting if I had gone into it with different expectations possibly, but I just couldn't do it. It was a sci-fi reminiscent of Douglas Adams, but I say only reminiscent because while the writing was very similar in how goofy and funky it was, I never felt like I came out with a good understanding of what was being described the way that I do with Douglas Adams in this book. I found that I was wading through the situations being described constantly. I just, it was really just the descriptions where I loved the absurdism to them, but f quite frankly, there were just too many of them. They were too long for my taste. And that's all I have for you guys today. But let me know below, what was your most disappointing read this year? Do you have problems with any of my most disappointing reads? Are you, let me know below. I'll talk to you guys about them. And that's it. That's all. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.